All right, everyone, it's time to uh, amusingly have to defend InfoWars, which is a site that I myself don't really use. Uh, I, I'm, I'm friendly with Paul Joseph Watts, and don't agree with everything he says, but a lot of it's pretty good. But I don't really watch the Alex Jones show. I think a lot of the time it's a little bit too over the top for me. I like it a little bit more dry and academic, I think. Uh, but I'm going to put this out there. I don't know if anyone else has considered this, but I think all the recent attacks on them are probably coordinated, and here's why. It seems that multiple different types of groups are attacking InfoWars along different lines for the same basic reason, which is, uh, I, I guess, wanting to crush them out of existence because they're a potent competitor. Now, with, you know, the alt media, InfoWars being, you know, part of the missing link media, actually. It is a corporatized uh, conglomerate. It is definitely a business. It's not a single person with a webcam that doesn't have any corporate back. And they have sponsors, they have advertisements and all these things. But they're not the same as CNN. They're not owned by a multinational parent firm. They have become a significant competitor on big tech platforms, on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and so forth, with, with CNN and these other groups. These other cable groups think that they have billions of dollars and all, all of the cable support. They, they own cable. They, I think, see it as odd that there would be a group like InfoWars, which is you know far lower a budget, far fewer staff, uh, less sophisticated in the technological sense, has no cable presence. I think they find it odd that they're being outcompeted by them online. They're worried. They're worried because they realize, oh, if we don't knock these people out of the way by, you know, defaming or suing or using censorship against them with our big tech partners that we buy ads with, that we have streaming bundles with, hmm, yeah, I wonder, I wonder why they're being listened to. If we don't do that, we will lose. Over time, as the cable audience dies off, people are cutting the cable, and most people that aren't are dying off, literally, because they're over 60. So CNN's actual audience is disappearing. It's obvious that, that a paid streaming bundle CNN style isn't, isn't going to cut it. No, they need to get in on the pie of uh, knocking people out of the way so there are fewer options for news. The way that the legacy media has chosen to handle this situation is defamatory in nature, literally attempting to attack people by defaming their character, using middlemen that I'm sure that they've paid. Uh, so you've got Alex Jones being slandered, it seems, with, oh, well, he was grooming people. It's a sex scandal. This is the tabloid attack is that there's a sex scandal involving him, I guess, making like gay comments to young male interns or something. Um, this seems to be totally uncorroborated and unsourced. It seems to be uh, literally fake news. Uh, but it's coming out at the same time that InfoWars also gets written up about on CNN saying, well, we're going we're gonna to look into you, you have some clickbaity stuff, and at the same time that YouTube begins cracking down on the sort of people that probably would back InfoWars in such a fight. Don't you find it odd that this large, vast core of people who ultimately have very different ideologies and very different independent focuses as far as their content. Like, I cover literature and the occult with politics. Another channel may just be about the Second Amendment. Another one is just about, like, censorship. Another one's part of the weird side of YouTube. It's more conspiratorial. But ultimately, all of these things have one thing in common. They hate the legacy media. They don't trust them. None of us trust CNN. None of us trust Fox or all of these other groups. So who are we going to back in such a struggle if the lamestream media attempts to knock InfoWars and all of its you know, cohorts uh, and contemporaries off of these platforms because they want more audience? Who are they worried about ultimately being angry enough to make a video or a blog post or a Facebook page post backing InfoWars and potentially making it a really, really messy situation for CNN and its uh, contemporaries? People like me. That's who they're worried about. That's why, I think that's why there was the YouTube purge. I think it was a preemptive strike uh, by these groups, and they overstretched. They pissed too many people off. They had to back up. Now they're on plan B. Plan B is just to wipe InfoWars out, I suppose, with multiple attacks at the same time. So, you have three different tales at the same time. You have Alex Jones' sex scandal, which, again, appears to be totally fake. You have tales now, uh, Ibby Times, I believe, is one of them putting it out. And aren't they paired with the Wall Street Journal or one of these groups? I'm pretty sure that they have the same parent company as one of these other groups that is more directly attacked InfoWars as well. Uh, comes out and says, well, uh, InfoWars is misusing advertising. Like they're, do they're uh, advertising products without the knowledge of the, co of the companies that make those products. 
Yeah, so basically it's like, hey, if you drink Red Bull on camera, somehow Red Bull should have a say in, in the video content. No, it's really not the way that it works. Dude, you've already purchased the product. So fucking who cares? Now, you realize it would become basically impossible to have any independent content at all with that reasoning. Like, oh, you have a Windows laptop we are using to make your videos. We don't like your videos, so we're going to strip them all offline because you used our laptop, our proprietary software to produce the video. You know, somehow that gives us a say. You know, you're just renting uh, your video making skills, something like that. You, you eat uh, Johnsonville brats and Johnsonville brats decides that you're too toxic. So they say you're no longer allowed to buy these from the store uh, and consume them or tell anybody that you're consuming them because you're, you're becoming a sponsor or something when you do that. And then you have as well the, uh, the generic attack by CNN. Um, so they're extremists. They're clickbaiting. They're saying disrespectful things about uh, these Parkland survivors. Well, no, number one, not about all of them. Number two, if a person has appointed themselves a public spokesperson on a political issue, of course you can, uh, you know, uh, go after them. Of course you can insult them. They're a public figure. There's a difference between some random person on the street who is not well known and a public figure. When someone goes up on the cameras and makes all these sweeping statements about gun control, they become a public figure. Certainly within a legal framework, you would be able to successfully make that argument in the court. Somehow that has become a huge sticking point for CNN, but it's just virtue signaling. CNN doesn't actually care about the issue. They just want money. They want a, an excuse to attack. I, I've told people, be careful of what you say. Be, be, be a little bit more cautious of the opinions that you give, or at least how you word those opinions. Because they are looking for any excuse to destroy any competitor that they can. If your content crosses certain boundaries that could be even loosely construed as approaching the edges of the TOS on a site like YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, they are going to probably have some one of their, their minor company subsidiaries do a write-up about how evil you are and then contact uh, that big tech network. They've already done this. Wall Street Journal comes out, attacks PewDiePie, raises a big stink. Oh, he, he did this and it's edgy. He should be stripped back from these, these, uh, the, the ad sense that he gets. He shouldn't be able to have this, uh, you know, sort of production that he's doing partnered with YouTube. He shouldn't be able to have this. He shouldn't be able to, he shouldn't even have a channel. John Tron should be kicked off the platform. He shouldn't be able to do a voice in a video game or whatever it was because he had an opinion that could be considered edgy. And all of a sudden some, some tech news site makes a write up about it. It's not because they actually care. They don't morally care about these issues. They just want to destroy or limit their competitors. Now, so far, it's backfired. So far, anytime they try to suppress someone, it just makes them more well-known. It just makes them more popular. Ultimately, their only real goal, I think, is to cripple the big tech platforms altogether. YouTube needs to be very wary about the friends so-called that it has made recently, about the CNNs that come in and, and quietly shake their hands and say, hey, we can help you with your play here. We want to pay for a streaming bundle. Yeah, let us take out more ad revenue. Oh, by the way, this other person's being edgy. You should kick him off the platform. <laughs> you see, ultimately, they don't, they're not going to make any uh, money on YouTube. Nobody gives a fuck about their content. They got a huge number of subscribers. The actual engagement per video is lower than people with a small fraction of their actual total sp supposed audience. How many of those accounts, by the way, are botted? How many accounts does CNN have to buy? You know, there have been groups. Before mainstream groups, corporations, business pages doing that on Facebook, why wouldn't they do it on YouTube? I'm, I'm uh, scratching my head. I think if there's a profit motive, I think there's a possibility that that happens. Meanwhile, they come out and they slander people on the user base, like Wall Street Journal, and it's uh, I think it was on the 7th of February or something. They had their little write-up. And, and a picture of me was in it, and there was an article about extremists on YouTube. Okay, go through my content. Tell me what's extremist. Extreme free speech, well, a really big problem on the platform. Too much free speech. I know, it's a horrible thing. You hate it because it means that people like me can be more entertaining than the Wall Street Journal. That has become a problem, absolutely. I was in the final write-up of their main hitman against the, uh, the alternative media, the same dude who crafted the PewDiePie article. Now, I found that very, very good, to tell the truth. I think it's a mark that I've made it in life that that sort of thing happens. Can you imagine, a year ago, I never would have imagined that I would have been included by name in a hit piece that also mentions Infos by the Wall Street Journal of all places. Yeah, it's wonderful. I like actually being attacked by these people. Uh, but it's, it's beginning to denigrate the platform. And as for Infowars, I'm telling you, 
it appears this is a coordinated attack upon a group that is competing directly for money and for viewership with these legacy media firms. So they're trying to go after them first. I think that they're hoping that if they knock them off the big tech sites, that the problem will magically go away. But, you, but their problem is bigger. Their problem is young people don't care about CNN. They don't care about Fox. If anything, they watched a clip of it on someone else's channel uh, on, on YouTube or something, or on, uh, posted on a Facebook page. They're not going to their websites, though. I can't, I can't remember the last time I actively solicited any of these news websites. I can get their news without having to do that. It can be amalgamated elsewhere. It can be spoken of elsewhere, archived and plopped on 4chan or Reddit. Why the hell would I want to go to their website? No wonder they have money problems. Hopefully, they dry up and blow away. No, they're just propagandists. That's about all. Peace out.